Hello. So this is more a quick ish tutorial um, just of how I'm using Unreal and um, State Tree specifically, uh, because it seems to be a new feature. I'm still getting used to Unreal, uh, but I'm really liking what State Trees provide. So I wanted to share how someone might use them in a game of some kind. In my example, it's a city builder. So in State Trees in Unity, uh, sorry, in Unreal, looks like this. Uh, there you go. So it's a very like holistic view of a collection of actions. And in terms of programming, it's very common to have this kind of layout where it's a state machine, not just an animation tree of things, things happening after things happen, then update some variables after those get updated, then do this, but if, but don't just lock it. So as an example with what I'm trying to convert, it's my original is ma game is made in Lua and a very small Lua framework. And the citizens here have like a life AI, quote unquote, where if they're free, then when it kind of starts, if they're free, then go and check if their, their building still exists and if their, their home building still exists and go home. If they're still free, maybe go help. If they're still free, maybe like go find some work if, if this and that, but like it's more open-ended where there's no else statement anywhere. Everything is very much like open-ended. So the, like an AI has like free range to do anything they want to do. Uh, so that's something that I wasn't like finding in Unreal um, and easily. And I found chaining stuff to be kind of a pain, but I like with the state uh, tree system, um, it's quite nice to be able to command things whenever things are available to the uh, to the uh, AI. So the way it works here is onload. Uh, if their actor is not a citizen yet, then go and find a home. Once they find a home, then go to the house. Once they go to the home, now they become a citizen. And then everything else just kind of like works assuming that they're their citizen. So in this case, once they're a citizen, then maybe go find some food because the food meter is about to go down. So that this all gets started by you finishing the first loop of your state life cycle. So once you become a citizen, you go and through the rest of the tree and you can see a bunch of these have question marks because they only go they only get validated if for example citizen is marked for death or um the perishables like your food mirrors below minimum all these conditionals right uh in this case at the bottom there is no conditionals so this tree is actually going to end up executing like finish the first part nope 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 all right nothing to uh no requirements here i'm just going to go through here so after they become a citizen, assign other buildings. And once that's done, the tree is gone. So it's quite similar to the Lua version. And I find it quite clean to look at. Uh, so in this case, once they become citizens, then go and assign a food building or perishables building. And then over here on the next loop, check first if their perishables are below minimum. And that is just a variable so if it's if it's below minimum then go go to that building um and then it then you basically recharge your your uh, perishables uh so the way this all gets looped and spawned like like this is just the like the overall but like the way this this gets called is is quite clean and roughly speaking every two seconds there's a timer and the timer just restarts the the life cycle First, it updates a bunch of variables to make sure that like things are updated before the, st the cycle starts. Once they're updated, literally restart the logic. This is a built-in function that exists with state trees. It literally just get, goes back here and then starts over. But now with new variables. I'm not going to go super in deep because this is going to take like ages to like explain in terms of like every single button. There's videos for that. I just want to show like an example of that in use. So for example, on the second state, on the second loop, you can, it basically, you can actually see that the, if the perishables are below minimum from here, so over here, there's an update stats, 
and this is what will say oh yeah the perishables are below minimum just so you know on the next loop or well if like you're in the middle of doing something and uh and because this executes every two seconds right like something's gonna start overlapping well at the end of the state i have a busy marker to make sure that the person isn't actually in some stage in life to make sure that like this is not still executing and it's like a safeguard so this way this only restarts once the busy flag is cleared um and just to give an example because right now they only go the person only goes to store but the font mirror is going to keep going down forever uh it's quite simple to make a new state you just in this, my case i'm just going to duplicate it so i'm just going to grab this and i'm going to duplicate and i'm going to call this fun and um, and i'm just going to change that to fun this is just naming this is not doing any like variables what is doing variables is here so to change this to fun i'm going to change my boolean to check if fun is below minimum and if the building that exists is fun and find the inside the building uh change that to fun and walk this doesn't matter because there's only one path to walk on at this point. The assign function gives you that path. And then wait till your fun stats get recharged. So theoretically, this should update. So if you go below fun, just check that. Yeah. So now the person is going to the fun building and your fun's going up. So that's logic. It's it's quite like straightforward. Um, the the actions inside can get messy, you know, they can be busy, they can be like find a sign building is well right now it's just a big C function, C sharp function, oh sorry, C plus plus function. Um but you know with if you want to debug something, so for example, this is the find the sign building task, which is the very first thing you have here. If I just right click, toggle breakpoint, and then play, it will immediately stop because you're hitting this immediately if you you know press play again and once you get to the building this should hit again because now you're down here and it should hit one more time yep because now you are where is it now you're down here at the fun level i'm not sure if i can debug this uh but i should be able to yeah, fun. So this gets called three times. Um, and yeah, like now, and now there's further checks, but yeah. So that's how I'm using it. I'm using it as a, just a generic AI controller that's quite open-ended and can continue to be open-ended. And yeah, hopefully that's of help to anyone. Just the last thing to, to like let you know, don't forget to compile, otherwise your changes might break. Uh, this is a thing with state trees. If you can, if you just hit like play, it's not gonna automatically compile the file. So make sure you hit compile for these things. Yeah, thanks for your time.